which runways were the buzz of the season? This issue of Video Fashion features spring-summer 2013 collections swarming with winged inspiration. At Alexander McQueen, designer Sarah Burton offers a wasp-waisted sweet escape. The interesting use of amber, almost tortoiseshell, that looked like honey against the skin. Sophie Taylor's spring motif evokes feminine individuality. It's a dragonfly. So that prints means malefique or spirituality. The industrious nature of the humble bumblebee motivates Mario Schwab's latest collection. If the bees are going to be extinguished, then we are really totally lost. Forget digital photography. This season, J. Crew goes old school with eco inspiration. I came across my old uh, Time Life books about nature. And later, Vivian Westwood's Winged Muse conveys a story of womanly resilience. A beetle is got a hard outside. And more. Oh, I think Sarah Burton is just brilliant. And what's amazing about her, in the same way which was true of Alexander, this label is completely in its own universe. But it's connected to our universe, and that's what's so incredible. This collection was so delicious. It was like the most delicious summer day of your life, and you fall asleep, and you have this wild and crazy dream, and a bee bites you, and that's how you wake up. It was really like that, you know? It was so delicious to look at, but it had its sting. Is there any wonder there's so much buzz around this collection, <laughs> literally and figuratively? The idea of beekeepers and, of course, honeycombs throughout the entire collection. I'm loving all the bustiers that were actually a fantastic jacquarded honeycomb that topped a honeycomb lace. And the interesting use of amber, almost tortoiseshell that was worked inside of a bustier and also as cuffs on many of the models that were set up with Napoleonic bees that looked like honey against the skin. Oh my God, it was beautiful. I think every time you come here and look at a Sarah Burton collection, it's just ravishing. I mean, I've looked at the brocade, the tortoise shell, the way that she constructs everything, the corsetry. I mean, it really is art, the way that she does this. I mean, it's closed, but it's so incredibly imagined. I think that she's such an amazing craftswoman and she sort of digs so deep in her ideas and I thought that the bee was a nice connection with other things that Alexander McQueen uh, was interested in towards the end of his life so I appreciated that. I particularly loved the amazing cage effect of a corset, which is something we see here at Alexander McQueen by Sarah Burton often, that were over the top of a jacket or a bustier, and then a cage skirt that was topped with beautiful soft chiffon with interesting ruched banding that went all the way around the skirts, in either a beautiful beige or a honey yellow. It's wildly creative, it makes us dream, it's a fantasy, and their clothes customers love to buy and collect. The McQueen show this year for me just felt a lot lighter. I loved all the honeycomb idea of, of the print that was sort of explored in sort of varying degrees of transparency and lace and different embroidered, technically beautiful things, you know, brought a much lighter, optimistic feel to it, which I loved. I loved it so much. And I think what Sarah's really done is taken the essence of McQueen and what Lee did and really keep moving it forward in a way that's very, I look at this and I, I, I know people are going to think I'm crazy, but there's something very accessible about the way that she's approaching the McQueen collection every single season. As fantasy as it is for a lot of different women, there is actually really great clothes and great silhouettes in there. evolving constantly which I you know I think you know it's becoming more and more feminine which I love and you feel like it is really her now you know still respecting the house I think a lot of the problem with a lot of the shows that take on the names of other brands is there's such a little sort of consideration for what came before I think no, no you're not supposed to replicate but it's 
brilliant to consider what came before and evolve beyond that, but still keeping the sort of essence of the person who was there, you know? The sentiment was brilliant, it was so good. We're just doing something quite graphic, a very low side part. It's like a version of, you know, trying not to do a ponytail, trying not to do a bun. And it was just a way of giving that feel of the short haircuts without having wigs. I'm using actually a lip gloss on the eyes because I want the color to be see-through. I want it to be very super light, super fresh. It's like a maroon eggplant color, intense, but very aqua. And the lips are very central. It's like a beige, nude color. It makes women look extremely beautiful. It's a print. It's a dragonfly. So that print means malefic or spirituality. And I make that parallel of the way that we perceive women in different cultures. I love to play with colors. I take colors like that, I mix it, I look, and that's the way that I work. The color is the beginning of each collection for me. Even the black is a color for me. So it's just to find the two colors who are not going normally together, generally I mix them. I thought it was really beautiful. I think what she does so well is kind of take these kind of ethnic influences and put them into a very Western feel with the kind of draping and the combinations of colors. And I think it's a really special show in New York. Nobody works with color the way she does. What an incredible designer she is. Her craftsmanship is unparalleled. Her sense of color is delightful and amazing. Sophie is always good to her craftsmanship, right? Always, always. That's what makes her so unique today. I, think, I don't think anyone constructs clothes like her today. Sophie is such a brilliant woman. You know, she has that amazing couture training from France. I remember the first time I saw this collection when I was in Paris. And it has that detail, that delicate detail of someone with just a very fine eye. She really understands how to cut a dress and how to put a dress onto a woman. And at the end of the day, women love dresses. I love to show legs. I love to show the back. It's a timeless element, really. It's about timeless. Because as a woman, I think we always want to look the best that we can.